Abel were born of Eve while she was immortal. They were giants called Nephilim. Cain was born evil and Abel good. However, the third son of Adam and Eve, from whom we are supposedly all descended, Seth, was conceived after the fall and expulsion from paradise. This diagram is compiled from the description of relationships between these Genesis Torah characters from the Gnostic secret apocryphon of John, an apostle of Jesus Christ, from words supposedly spoken by Jesus Christ himself. All of this occurred in and around the Garden of Eden that is, the realm of Bariah within the four worlds of the Kabbalah, when it was still below Yetzirah and above Esaiah. Yetzirah was present within the Garden of Eden as the seven principles expressed on the right comprised of the middle path of the combined trees of life and knowledge. In Eden, the tree of life was granted Adam and Eve to eat from and to be immortal. However, Adam and Eve, deceived by the serpent, ate the forbidden fruit of the tree of knowledge, and that resulted in their expulsion from Eden. When this happened, Adam and Eve were cursed to eat from only the tree of knowledge, and then they saw the tree of life turn into the tree of death, and Eden, as the realm of Bariah, ascend beyond their reach, protected now by the seraphim angel with a flaming sword, upon a lattice shaped alike the 32 mystical paths of wisdom from Sefer Yetzirah's description of the tree of knowledge of Kabbalah. Thus we see that the cursed nature of man is to be driven forth away from his home by the will of God. The path of attaining and achieving prolonged Christ consciousness is a path of recapitulation, reuniting the mind of a person with the Godhead of their Creator. Scaling backward the seven days removes the sevenfold curse placed upon the seven generations and the seventh son of the seventh son. Scaling the tree of knowledge, we return into the Garden of Eden and can approach through the lower and upper realms described in the Bereshit Beth volume of Zohar into the presence of the Abba and Ima consciousnesses within the mind of God. And once we have returned into the Garden of Eden, we may look down toward Asaya from above Pariah, and we may look to Yetzira on our side, for we shall see the four worlds as they were before the fall, when Asaya was below Bariah, Bariah below Yetzira, and Yetzira below Atzaluth. Here again, from a position outside of and beyond the Tetractus of Ten Sephirot of Yetzira in Eden, on the same level as the lowest aspects of the Autogenes, the hind parts of God, in Ayan Sof R, at Saluth. Here we see that the Autogenes, God, is the immortal son of an eternal father, and that God, in turn, procreated with Sophia to beget Christ, also called Pigera Adamas, or Adam Cadman, the mental template for human evolution. Just as in the Gnostic Gospel, the Pistis Sophia, we can see it was with the autogenies that Sophia procreated to beget Christ as Pigera Adamas, but that it was purely from forethought or clairvoyance, the female aspect of wisdom, that Sophia, the mother of Christ, begat Christ's twin brother, Samael the Demiurge. It was Samael who, following Eve's eating the forbidden fruit on the tree of knowledge, seduced her and raped her to sire by her the twin-headed devil god of Yathevate and Elohim, whom Christ is recorded as calling the Error of Moses author of the Torah of the Old Testament of the Bible. So we see this tangled web woven by these ten in Eden, with Christ fucking immortal Eve, immortal Eve fucking Yaldabaoth, Yaldabaoth fucking immortal Eve, and mortal Eve fucking mortal Adam, all under the watchful eye of the autogenies fucking Sophia. Moreover, once the family are expelled from Eden, 
and enter the land of Nod to the east of Eden, there are other mortals, the wives of Cain and Seth, as well as others like Cain, the Nephilim giants, titans, or sons of God. To the mortals who lived in Nod, the family from Eden were called the Anunnaki. By the lifetime of seven Nephilim giants, sons of Cain, and twelve mortal humans, sons of Seth, a flood was sent by God to destroy all life on earth. It was in this era when Enos, son of Seth, and Enoch, son of Cain, were born. When Adam and Eve moved with Seth into Nod, Cain, who had slain his brother Abel, went into exile in the land to the north, called later Edom. Edom was a land of red clay caves believed to have been in what is now modern Gaza, Palestine. This was when, from the wives of men in Nod, Seth and Cain both chose wives, with whom Seth bore Enos and Cain bore Enoch. Thus the Nephilim giants of Edom established five kingdoms, the ruler of each of which was a Nephilim, and who were called collectively the five kings of Edom. Then the flood came to destroy all life on earth. It was sent to snuff out man, the giants, and all animals. The real reason the flood occurred at that time was natural. It happened when it did because of the shifting of our planet that occurs over the durations of aeons according to the solar measurement of Earth's polar precession. Thus, just as Yaldabaoth, as Samael, bred with immortal Eve in one aeon to conceive Cain, in the next aeon, Yaldabaoth coupled with mortal Eve to conceive yad Enoch, and Elohim, Enos. Insofar as Yaldabaoth signifies the entirety of the round of twelve aeons in the form of the twelve archons, there are aeons of Samael, Cain, and Abel on the usual wheel of the twelve archons, as well as nine others whose names remain mysterious aside from to researchers of the pre-diluvial apocryphal book of Enoch, where they are described as the other Nephilim giants. Thus each of the fallen angels or Nephilim giants ruled as an archon over one of the twelve aeons. As described in the last lecture, the twelve archon rulers over the seven powers was a prototype model for what we now know as the twelve signs of the Babylonian zodiac and the seven visible planets. Here we see Cain and Abel with Belus between them and Sabaoth on the opposite side. This is because it was Samael who conceived Cain with immortal Eve, but it was Belus who conceived Abel with mortal Eve. Samael, the Demiurge, is the twin brother of Pigera Adamus, or Christ, and so it was he who deceived immortal Eve by pretending to be his twin, Pigera Adamus, Adam Cadman, or Cosmic Man, and thus it was also he, Samael or Yaldabaoth, who conceived the plan to go down to the wives of men and to breed with them, and who thus became the fallen angels or Nephilim giants described by Enoch. It is said that of those who went along with his original plan, only Sabaoth repented. In Enoch, the name of the leader of the fallen angels, the Anunnaki or Grigori, is Shamiaza. Shem, literally, means the name. So, Shem Yeaza means the name Aza. Thus, it was Azrael, the fallen angel, whom the others followed. They made a pact to go down to the wives of men and make them their own. Shamiaza was their leader, however, eventually, we are told by Gnostic scriptures also, Sabaoth repented. But Sabaoth was Yaldabaoth, who was Samael or Sacklus, who was Shemiaza, who was Azrael, who was Raziel. All of these are names for the same fallen angel, cognate to the Christian Lucifer, who became Satan when cast out of heaven at the same time as Adam and Eve were cast out of Eden.
The Golden Dawn, Part 1D. As we descended in previous lectures from the Tree of Life of Yetzira before the Fall to the Tree of Death of Yetzira after the Fall, we study now the Tree of Knowledge as the main aspect of Hakabala today. Likewise, we who study Hakabala today are no strangers to the concept of the slippage of the middle pillar from this arrangement described by Isaac Luria, the blind, to this arrangement designed by the Ari of the Safed school, showing the lowest Sephirot, Malkuth, the kingdom, on the tree of knowledge to have slipped down one notch from its position on the tree of life. This was the Tree of Knowledge diagram used by Kabbalists from the era of the Dark Ages until the turn of the 20th century. At the turn of the 20th century, around the time Yehuda Ashlag was completing his commentary on the whole 23-volume Zohar in Hebrew, an Englishman named S. L. McGregor Mathers translated a small portion of the already abridged Tikkuni Zohar into English, calling it Kabbalah Dinudata. In Mather's translation, he shows the anatomy of God as Adam Kadman, overlaid by the tree of knowledge of the ten Sephirot. Thus, we may finally see the equivalent for Adam Kadman of the twelve signs of the zodiac placed up and down the body of the Shekinah. Mather's Kabbalah Dinudata offers the most comprehensive guide for completely comprehending her Kabbalah at the turn of the 20th century. Shortly before the publication by Mathers of Kabbalah Dinudata, the French Kabbalist Eliphas Levy was working on depictions for the various concepts he had learned from a study of the Tikkuni Zohar in Hebrew. As we saw in the earlier lecture on Adam Kadman, Levy provides us with this depiction of God lowering himself into the cosmos of the four worlds of Kabbalah. Levy has chosen the hexagram pattern to depict this concept. Also using the hexagram around the same time as Levy, who used it to symbolize the Kabbalistic process of God descending into the cosmos, was Madame Helena Petrovna Blavatsky, founder of the Theosophical Society, devoted to rewriting the story of the Bible to incorporate the wealth of New Age thoughts in Europe at that time, who used the hexagram as a symbol for the Western mystery tradition, the right-hand path, contrasted to the swastika, symbolic to theosophy of the Eastern tradition, the left-hand path. In the earlier version of the Theosophical Society's logo designed by H.P. Blavatsky herself, the hexagram contains her own initials, is crowned by the same swastika logo later used by the Nazis, and surrounded by an Ouroboros or snake eating its own tail. In the later version of the Theosophical Logos Society, redesigned after H.P. Blavatsky's death, the hexagram contains an Ankh cross. The swastika is switched to its arrangement as a traditional symbol of Buddhism, and outside the Ouroboros is the slogan, There is no religion higher than truth, a common saying from the era of rationalism and reason following the Enlightenment a century before. The significance of changing this logo was due to the original Blavatsky orientation of the swastika being adopted by the Nazis. However, this subtle difference has been overlooked by far too many subsequent and even modern day followers of Blavatsky's theosophical rewriting of the biblical myths. Her intention was to form the mythological aspect of a New Age religion that was missing only one aspect, a secret doctrine a single working dogma that could 